Hello everyone, this is Kevin L. Jackson, host of Digital Transformers. Did you know that the global video gaming market size is expected to exceed $268 billion annually in 2025? This is an increase from $178 billion US dollars in 2021. That is a huge market. And today I'm speaking with Hamak Patel, consulting manager at Ericsson Cloud and Software Services about the impact of 5G and network slicing on this important communication service provider industry segment. How are you doing today, Herman? Doing great, and hello, everyone. Yeah, so let's get right into it. With, with 5G standalone, network slicing is finally getting its due attention as a key enabler for many new 5G services, and in particular for enterprises. What is happening in the market today? Happy to share. Globally, the script seems to have changed. Northeast Asian markets have taken lead, while North America is a fast follower. The leading CSPs in Northeast Asia are stimulating the market with products enabled by 5G quality of service and slicing. Mm -hmm. To the extent that some use case application of network slicing for enterprise in verticals like manufacturing, utilities, and healthcare have gone commercial. As for the 5G consumer segment, Operators across the globe are still juggling with the business justification of leveraging network slicing. However, they have seeded the market with offerings leveraging their 5G investments and are starting to monetize enhanced connectivity through content of charge and or app subscription fees. Wow, that's really important. Now, as Ericsson, you are at the forefront of talking with these CSPs what measures do you see CSPs need to take in order to be successful with network slicing services focused towards the enterprises? Well, one thing would be the lighthouse approach. Early innovator CSPs pick a lighthouse customer in a specific vertical and a lighthouse use case. They then use this to arrive at what is valuable for enterprise and by how much. It further allows them to quantify the value of quality slice characteristics or parameters such as bandwidth in uplink and downlink, low latency, security and isolation, etc. something that they would then productize and monetize at scale. With this learning in mind, we in Ericsson have defined our own innovation methodology. It's called 5Ds, define, discover, develop, demonstrate, and finally deploy. The first D define helps the CSP with target prioritization. We have a framework and pre assessed data points to help CSPs perform vertical prioritization, customer prioritization, and use case prioritization. The D discover is then about detailing the shortlisted use cases to understand the business model, partners, ecosystem, uh, service flow, money flow, estimated use case benefits, etc. The remaining three Ds are pretty self explanatory in develop the solution design, demonstrate with a proof of concept, and finally deploy in production network to go commercial. But coming back to those first two Ds, I must mention that a year or so earlier, we at Ericsson came out with some torch bearer reports on where the market for network slicing is for CSPs in enterprise market. The industry segments, use cases, and the revenue potential, apart from sharing the building blocks of this network slicing transformation journey. Wow, sort of an enhanced lighthouse, I guess. But now you're writing about mobile cloud gaming as an early use case. Why do you need slicing for cloud gaming? Thanks for this question, Kevin. Let me answer it in two parts. Firstly, the early use case aspect. Indeed, we find mobile cloud gaming, call it as the universal use case being vetted by CSPs to answer questions around business, commercial, technical, and operational. And hence, after working with several operators on proof of concepts, uh, there is glowing clarity on technical benefits. But then we see a need to address questions around the commercial and business model aspect, things like target customer segment, market demand, customer willingness to pay, and a bunch of important data points specific to gaming. Okay. So while we are able to provide substantial insights in through the upcoming series of papers, the business case will have to be 
run by every CSP, grounded in their own market realities, and then decide which level of offering they should go to market with, whether it's a plain vanilla best effort gaming service or leverage slicing for mobile cloud gaming. Now, coming to the second part, why use slicing for cloud gaming? There are three very important aspects. One, reliability, two, scalability, and three, elasticity. So when we talk of reliability, operators can provide latency window corridors with slicing to address network jitter, which is a key gaming pain point today affecting the gamer experience. With scalability, they can maintain flexibility in their network. Uh, I would say, would you try to build an expensive network serving desired high network performance requirements as one network versus a slice network that can help you capitalize additional ARPU along with efficient resource utilization? And then, of course, elasticity. Operators can easily handle busy and off-peak times to provide a consistent experience for gamers. Yeah, so I can see how those um three areas really sort of play off each other. How, how would the operators offer mobile cloud gaming? Right. So first, I must state that gaming as a use case is mostly handled by consumer product team in the CSPs. Okay. However, mobile cloud gaming can be monetized as a consumer service play or as an enterprise service or both, depending on how the CSP handles this relationship within the ecosystem with the gaming providers and other players. Add to it a second dimension of monetizing as a premium service or bundle, and we have four different models. Operators can, of course, choose to apply one or all four. The first one, plain and simple B2C premium offering where CSP white boxes and sells a gaming service directly to the consumers. The second, still a business to consumer case, B2C, where CSP resells cloud gaming as a bundle with 5G plus size slicing data plan. The third, a B2B2C or rather an enterprise play. So where CSP sells slice to a developer or a gaming provider who builds it into the game and any end user that downloads and uses the app gets access to the telco slice quality of service. The fourth one, a premium B2B2C offering where the CSP sells a slice to the developer who sells to the gamer and in-app, in-game offer to upgrade. You can easily see that it gets quite complicated, both from a business and technical perspective as you reach the fourth business model. But let uh -huh. me assure everyone that technology is fast catching up to service such a model. Right. This is, this is really important to understand that the speed of the technology change. So, so what will the uh, CSPs have to do to be successful with mobile cloud gaming? It's important. Uh, in our experience, most CSPs, if not all, have figured out that they need one, partner with right game service providers, two, select target customer segments because there are different types of customers who will become gamers or who are gamers, three, start offering in hotspots and scale, et cetera. Our upcoming paper throws more light on this. But having been immersed in finding this business justification of slicing for mobile glove gaming, the burning question that CSPs are looking to answer is, is it viable, right? And yeah. here I have to say is strategically, uh, start strategically in early stages and ensure to gain a foothold in the value chain. Over time, the business case is cash flow positive. If you add to it the capabilities that will come, like dynamic slicing and exposure-enabled modification of slices, okay. the business case will drastically improve. But today, capture the value as part of the value chain. CSPs must start now and stimulate the ecosystem growth. Don't let the OTT players take away the value this time now. Okay, so like, like I always say, you got to focus on the strategy, right? So, so thank you for that great insight, Hamat. That was extremely informative and important information for all communication service providers. But with that point, we need to close out our conversation. So on behalf of the entire team here, this is Kevin L. Jackson wishing all of you a bright and transformational future.